Hello, golfers. Welcome back to JD Golf TV. I'm John Dunnigan, and I'm here to help you play better faster. Today's golf lesson is way more important than you think, and it is called Your Shoes Are Killing You. So let's get after it. Got to tell you a little story about my own kid, who's now a one handicap golfer, just shot even par second day term this weekend, so she doesn't suck at golf. Well, she had to have these new golf shoes that uh, Brooks Kepka wore during the U.S. Open. Yes, he won it. And their flower print. Yes, very cool. Awesome. And the shoes had a wicked high heel. Let me show you what I'm talking about. And this is not the same shoe. And by the way, get you some sneaker odor eaters, please. That heel is way up higher than the forefoot. Okay. What this does is pitch the golfer toward the golf ball. I'm standing now on the swing catalyst pressure plate. That's this black thing I'm standing on. And hopefully you can see how my feet are showing up in the view. Uh, this is called the heat maps. So there's my toes. There's my heels. Outside of the right shoe, outside of the left shoe, left heel. Okay, that's what the pressure analysis plate helps us with. It's really kind of cool. I use it very regularly. I also, I, I uh, caveat here, folks, I am a Swing Catalyst ambassador. So I really do like the product a ton. Doesn't mean I get stuff free. I had to pay for it too. But it's a really great tool to help analyze what's going on. An awful, awful lot of golfers during their swing are pitching their body toward the ball. And that is no bueno unless you enjoy hitting shanks and gear effect fades off of the heel of your golf club. Well, it turns out so many of us are wearing these high heel sneakers. So my daughter, Mary, goes out gets these new shoes, and this kid hits it solid, okay? She gets her brand new shoes, and within minutes, she starts shanking it. And, well, I might have known that was coming. I said, okay, hold on, kid. Go get your other shoes. So we go have a little test, and guess what happens? The shanks go away. She went from her high heel shoes to a shoe somewhat more like this one here, same company, but you can see this shoe has a lot flatter sole. And there are even some shoes from companies like Echo and True. I'm actually going to order a pair of True golf shoes, which are called Zero Drop. I almost think it might be more helpful to have shoes that are a little higher in the forefoot because that helps us rotate. And the thing is, a golf is a, is a rotation-based sport. Okay, it, It's like the hammer throw in the Olympics. That's golf. Well, when I get caught on my toes too long, guess what? I can't rotate now. How am I doing right now? Okay, that's no good. That's going to look somewhat like this. So here I'm set up at a dress, and I can get an idea of where my weight, and when I'm not moving, weight and pressure are pretty much the same darn thing, just so you know. There I am at a dress. I'll check a look where I am. I'm slightly on the balls of the feet, slightly toward the right foot. There we go. Hey, look at that. I'm moving. Folks, you will be amazed to see just how much of a difference this makes in your address where your weight is at address. You'll be amazed. If I get caught backward, my divot's coming backwards with me. All right. Any case, we're talking about shoes. So here I am with my nice shoes on. And when I go back on my backswing, I might have some pressure go to the trail foot, maybe a little bit toward the heel. I like to see this left heel come up. I actually have some students that were doing this on the backswing going to both heels. That's no way, no, because now I can't move. So on the backswing, these shoes are letting me move. Now, we're going to see a little trace there. You can notice, by the way, I fell off balance a little bit backwards away from the golf ball like you see on TV. Here comes the replay. When looking at the swing, I have drawn a little line on my butt. We're going to call that the hiney liney, folks. 
And I love this overhead view because it's like, I would consider this the poor man's 3D swing analysis tool. I'm gonna get that line a little bit more on my belt. On the backswing, we can see at address, the pressure is more toward the balls of the feet. Boy, it's to the right foot again, Donegan. You better watch that, bud. That's too far to the trail foot. But in any case, the pressure is mainly on the balls of the feet. And this is important. Almost every professional I've ever seen, I have a whole database on my other uh, big computer with the 3D uh, dual force plate system. Every professional starts off on the balls of their feet because that helps us rotate. We go back in the backswing and there's some shift to 77% to the trail foot, a little bit toward the heel. Now, we see a D line toward the front shoe. We're checking out the pressure now. In fact, let me make this a little bit more clear for you. There's the pressure. This is center of pressure velocity, how fast I'm moving. That will be a totally different uh, video at some point, folks. Okay, we can see pressure going to the trail. I call it the arch of the shoe, but slightly toward the heel. We can see the pressure go beeline toward the front of the left shoe and then circle around. And this little trace right here, this little baby arcing trace, is about correct. If there is one way of doing it, that's a decent way of creating some speed because I've got to get out toward the toe of my shoes in order to create rotation, but I got to get back off the toes into the heel right there. Otherwise, guess what? Shank you very much. Is that interesting? Now we're going to switch over to the video from the overhead view now. And see what happens here. Little right cheek on the line, the left cheek on the line. Okay, so this is whether you're thrusting toward the golf ball. And by the way, I very frequently cure thrust toward the golf ball, which brings the golfer to the ball and the shank into play just with the foot pressure. Isn't that cool? If I take my shoes off, okay, it's one thing. I can feel my feet better. Not a bad thing at all, but it actually does interfere with the force I can create, which I've already done. So in any case, we take our shoes off. That's one thing. That's one simple thing. Now with my shoes off, I have more feel for my feet on the ground, which I kind of dig. But usually what happens here, I've seen it happen with extremely high level players. We take the shoes off and they actually don't move as well. So it's really a uh, find, find out something about your feet, how you're working on your feet on the ground rather than a great idea. It will slow you down because you don't have quite as much friction against the ground. Now, so now I've got to go, okay, this is a cool use of the swing cap. All right, I got to find without looking up, what would be 55% of the front foot? And that's about right. 55% of the front foot is a good idea. All right, now I take a look up, I'm on the back foot again. This is crazy, but this is golf, okay? It's moving pretty good there, folks. All right, here we go. Now I can see it. Okay, now I'm a little bit on the front foot. It feels like I am just leaning like this. Does it look like that on the TV, folks? I don't think so. All right, here we go. Better to be forward toward the front foot than backward with and iron, the ball's on the ground, and the divot follows me around like a shadow. So if I'm more forward, I can hit the ground out here with much less work. Okay, here we go. That feels more front foot. All right, no shoes. Let's see what we get now. Okay, I hit that one pretty good again, folks. I can't lie. That was pretty darn solid. We'll look at that recording now. And same kind of arced trace. Trail foot, out toward the ball of the left foot and back into the heel of the left foot, okay? And the amount is reasonable. I like to see anywhere from 60% to the trail foot. Some people don't work well with a big shift. 
to as much as 90 to the front. Okay. I'd like to see 85, but I go to 90, 95 more than that, you're going to start falling over. And once again, old Dunnigan is obeying the high knee liney, not thrusting toward the golf ball. Another thing you can see, by the way, from the overhead view is a very reasonable look at orientation. So here I am right about impact. And you can see that that belt line is now way over here. So I've rotated pretty good. Now, an interesting thing, I don't look at where the shoulders are. And that's because this left shoulder comes forward toward the ball. It's called protraction during the downswing. I kind of look at this area up here. And so I'm actually pretty open there. That's, that's reasonable for an old guy. Okay, now we're going to take a quick break. I'm going to go get my running shoes on and see what that looks like, baby. This is like one of those running shoes shaped um, golf shoes, folks. The heel is well higher than the forefoot. Okay, we're going to see if that does anything to me during this golf swing. And yeah, there's no... We're not all the same, okay? So it's very possible that a different golfer can still work a running shoe style shoe better. But I'm telling you, my experience with force plates are, they're dangerous. They're really dangerous. At a dress, I can already feel I'm being pitched more toward the ball. See how my brain irons this out for me. Do you remember Jack Nicklaus, some golfer? When he stood out of dress, his left leg was just about vertical. I thought that was really interesting. All right, there we are. Okay. Now, you could imagine that it's going to take longer than one swing for me to overcome the shoe, right? So this would be really cool. I couldn't cheat on that one. Let's just see what happened. So on this one... You can see from the trace, I got caught out toward the, I got almost to the heel and shoved me back out toward the toe again. Is that interesting? Now, same old good backswing, a little more thrusty. On the backswing, look how far back my right cheek is. On the forward swing, do I get back anywhere near that far? Not bad, but definitely not the same. I can feel myself pitching forward, and it's written all over the trace. And by the way, if I give you one cool look at the down the line view, now you can really see it. Watch how much I go toward the ball. If I give you that right there. There it is. I'm moving in toward the ball. And folks, the problem is there's, there's not much I can do about it. Okay, now we have the other shoes. The black one's back on. All right, let's see what we get now. Very interesting game, isn't it? Let's just see if it's any different or if I'm just making it up. Check out this down the line view that we did just a second ago. And let's see if there's as much moving toward the golf ball. There's less, isn't there? Isn't that something else? Less thrust. If we look at the actual footwork, I was able to move into my left heel much better. Isn't that something, folks? I hope the swing catalyst and the video help you see. Folks, you're only getting a little bit of thrust before we have a major problem in golf. Okay, thrust is belt buckle toward the ball. There are many tricks that we can have to get people away from that. One would be to go from the ball of the shoe backward. So I'm pushing off this foot to spin myself out pocket back. A lot of different things that we could do to help us cure the thrust. If you are healing the golf ball, if you have the occasional or even worse, frequent shank, check your shoes first. It is the easiest fix. I'm telling you right now, it would be so cool if I had my my front. I don't I just don't know whether it'd be okay for your feet for walking, but if the if I could change it where the forefoot was elevated a little bit more than the heel instead of what we have now, I'm telling you, I think that I could actually help a ton of golfers. So anyway, there you have. Check it out. Don't let your shoes kill you. Game's already hard enough. We don't need any help making it harder. Right, get after it, folks.